Greetings, my friends, and uh, Shalom Chavarim. I wanted to speak to you guys. Um, I put out a video today about comments that were being made. Um, and, and honestly, I did not know for sure exactly where the comments were being made at, but they, I knew they were being made about Orthodox uh, Jewish people that have undoubtedly it has caused an increase of Orthodox Jews to be watching the videos. And I knew specifically that these people that were making these comments were uh, ultra-Orthodox uh, Hasidic Jews, such as the organization that I'm a part of as well. And when I made the video, I quickly just made a video. And the reason I did this video was because the questions they were asking, I, I knew exactly where they're coming from, from an Orthodox uh, with the orthodox type questions they were asking and I had quickly just did a fast video for you guys and I just asked if you guys see those type questions on there if you would just if you didn't mind just not respond to them and the reason I was asking that is because I knew exactly where they were coming from why they were asking the questions and I know the typical response that a lot of scholars have given because some of the questions are ones that are you can see in debates and many of the biblical scholars have really have been um, I don't want to say they've been defeated but I know that their answers back to the Hasidic Jews are not something that the, the Hasidic Jew, Jewish community accepts they basically just kind of make a laughing stock out of Christianity and uh, I didn't want to get into a situation where if we begin to debate them and stuff and then the next thing they know before I could really have a chance to sincerely um, take that debate that they have and try to answer them a little bit more from the side that I can relate to them on. Uh, I didn't want them to just up and leave and then write us off as, you know, well, typical answer, you know, and then they won't respond back at all. And this was the only purpose why I'd actually made the video. Uh, I certainly don't mean it as far as from being that I have a better answer or I have the right way of doing things and that um, I, and I, I'm making this video now because I'm looking at some of the comments and quite honestly, I don't get to see all the comments because we have so many videos on YouTube. Um, Comments on a daily basis are around 500 to 1,000 comments a day. And that's because of the number of videos. Uh, so I, there's no way for me to see all the comments that come in. Uh, my wife does uh, try to go through all of them and to let me know uh, main things, like especially if there's questions that are being asked, things like that. Um, and, and I know the one lady that asked me, she'd asked a question about Ariel Sharon, and I had not gotten back to uh, her question as of yet as far as Ariel Sharon. And please understand too, uh, many people that do email me questions, uh, even in emails, I get anywhere from three to 400 emails a day. Uh, out of that, there's probably gonna be anywhere from 50 to 100 of those are gonna be questions themselves. It's difficult for me to answer every one of them. So what I normally do is I try to take once a week and I begin to go back and answer questions uh, as quickly as I can, or if it's something I see that uh, a group of people will be asking pretty much the same thing, I'll try to answer that and maybe something that I speak on. So if I miss your question, it's nothing intentional. It's just the, the two of us here trying to deal with the volume of information that comes in. And as far as for the Jewish people, you know, I'm not saying that you can't answer them at all, but I don't mean it like that. And as uh, one person here was saying that I've exalted myself, it's nothing to do with that. I knew, though, the question that was being asked, and I knew how it should be answered uh, in a way that I felt like would have an impact upon this individual. And also, when I have those type questions, I'm personally not wanting to get, get them into a public forum debate because... I figure that I can have more success with them if I reach out. Once I see who they are, I can reach out to them privately. And that way, we can open up and have a more of an open dialogue together. Uh, also, in, in the process of this, I got called a half Egyptian and half Jew. Uh, 
I'm sure I've got some uh, Gentile blood in me. There's no doubt about that. But both my parents are Jews. Not one, but both of them are. And so, but, but nonetheless, you know, I, I don't, you know, if you see that I've done something wrong and, you know, rather than just uh, making a comment about it first, because it could be a misunderstanding. And I think that's what this is here. It's more of a misunderstanding because I'm not trying to say that the Christian people don't have good answers. There's many good answers from the Christian people. And, and scholars have done a remarkable job in proving who the Messiah is by the scripture. But also the Jews have taken the things that the scholars have used to prove who Jesus is. And for the last 2,000 years, these Jews have armed themselves on how to overcome your answers. And so therefore, I'm trying to approach my people in a way that they're not used to. And that's what I believe is sparking some of these questions that they're asking. It's because it's something new to them. They're hearing something that they haven't heard before, and they're trying to reason that out in their minds. And I believe this is why we've seen this happen suddenly. Several people came in, and quite frankly, I really didn't even know where the questions were being posted at. I don't have the best site, as you can see, in the world. I wear a 300 and something prescription for reading glasses. When it pops up on my phone, I can vaguely see it, you know, and I'm like, oh gosh, because my phone's just going ding, 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 ding all day long with messages that are coming in. And, uh, and I just so happened to have opened up something, and when I did, I saw a comment from an Orthodox Jewish guy, and then I seen another one earlier uh, the same way, and I'm like, this is interesting, you know? And so I, I didn't even want to try to answer it there. I thought, okay, I'll look these guys up, and I'll see if I can't speak to them privately. Uh, but anyway, I hope that settles that, and, uh, you know, forgive me if you, if you, if you took that wrong. I, I didn't mean to make it sound wrong. I didn't mean to belittle the Gentile people because uh, to me, as even as the one sister says, yes, we are all part of the body of, of Christ. And I agree with that 100%. Uh, I, but, but keep in mind though, there's different parts of the body. And as Paul said, you know, one member is not greater than the other, but every member of the body of Christ serves a purpose. You know, and so there may be things that God has gifted you with that I have no idea about. Uh, there's many people that have gifts that, that I can't even touch, you know. And I'm definitely not scholarly, you know. I don't have a scholarly mind. For me, it's just the way God anoints my mind to understand certain things. And even as I was telling my wife the other day, he deals with me more on the identity of the Messiah and how Jewish people would relate to that. That's probably the main place that God gifts me with. And so that's why my heart is trying to reach them with everything I can. So anyway, oh, by the way, uh, sister, you did ask. Uh, my wife brought that question out. I, I think it's, oh, yeah, it's right here on here. Uh, what do you think about Ariel, the Ariel Sharon prophecy? So, uh, yes, I, I do think that there is something to Rabbi Kaduri's prophecy about Ariel Sharon, that when, uh, when he passed, that shortly after his passing, that the Messiah would, come, would reveal himself to Israel. Uh, I think that's fixing to happen. Now, the only thing that I would say, though, in regards to Ariel Sharon and his passing, is that, um, for one, we want to give respect to the family of Ariel Sharon. Ariel Sharon was, was a great warrior in Israel. Uh, he fought in the Six Days War. And, uh, of course, we know he was Prime Minister of Israel as well when he suffered the stroke. Uh, he was actually the Prime Minister of Israel when I lived there in 2004, and I was there in 05 and 06. Um, but uh, when Rabbi Kaduri says that he believes that the, or, you know, the Lord revealed to him that the Messiah would reveal himself to Israel shortly after his passing, the question, I guess, really comes in is how short would that be? Is that uh, days? Is it weeks, months? Um, I don't think it would be more than a year. I'd say that. So I think as far as in the shortly, I think it would be within the year. And it may be shorter than that as well. Uh, I know another thing that I look at when I think about uh, Rabbi Kaduri's prophecy is that as we see the covenant that's being signed or fixing to be signed and the push to do a two-state solution in Israel, you know, it seems everything is coming to a head. I know we have the blood moons that will be uh, begin here in 2014 as well. 
uh, coming over on Passover is the first one. And in talking to Mark Belts about the blood moons, uh, he told me, he said he felt like that 2015 is a more significant uh, for the events that would transpire than he thought 2014 would be. And that may be, be very well so, but nonetheless, we may see Daniel's 70th week begin. Uh, so, it, it, and here's the ironic thing. If this is what's going to happen, and it's going to happen here, they're going to sign the covenant, then the other thing that's kind of ironic is the fact that Ariel Sharon uh, no doubt will probably pass away at any time now because I know that when the kidneys shut down then you normally only have three days left because of the way the poison sets into the body unless you do dialysis but I heard that he's in too bad of condition to do dialysis so we may find that this is going to fulfill very very soon anyway God bless all of you guys and again if, if you ever see something I say that bothers you uh, so drop me an email. Uh, I think pretty much everybody knows the email by now. It's the same as the website. IsraelReturns.com is the website. Our email is IsraelReturns at AOL.com. And uh, drop me a line. And if it's, in fact, if you put in the, um, in the box a uh, question uh, in your subject box there, my wife will move that over to a folder that's got on questions there. And then I'll, at the I try normally to go by the end of the week and start going through those. Also the same with the inbox uh, and the YouTube. I try to get to those as well. Sometimes it's a week or two weeks because there's so much going on in between there. Um, but anyway, just drop me a line. Let me know, uh, if, especially if it's something that I've offended someone or they feel like that I've done something I should not have done. You know, besides putting a question on there, Maybe make a note on there. Uh, it's a private matter. I need to talk to you or something like that. Something that you feel like might catch my attention to where I can address this sooner. Because I'd rather address something like this, especially when I feel like that uh, I've been misunderstood. And uh, and I would think the same thing with, with the messages that are posted. I, I really feel like that people would not have posted these messages if they really knew my heart about this and what my intent and what my motive was. It certainly was not anything uh, ill or to look down upon anybody because that's, I'm probably the last person to ever do that. I realize I'm not the smartest guy in the world by far. Uh, many people are much smarter than I am, you know, but, you know, I realize that. Uh, but anyhow, I, th I think you understand what I mean. So God bless you guys. Love you. And uh, pray for us. We certainly need it. We'll be praying for you.